when it comes to the tantrum, sometimes it's hard to tell who's more frustrated. Is it the kiddos or maybe it's the parents? Pediatric psychologist for Rainy Children's Hospital, Dr. Willow Jenkins, is here to help. And boy, do we need the help. I deal with this on a daily basis. I'm right there with you. Right? <laughs> and it just sometimes as a parent just makes you want to run your head right into the wall. Yes. Okay, so what is the toughest age when it comes to tantrums overall? Well, tantrums are generally happening from the 12 to 36 month age range, but I honestly think it's all hard. I will say though, if you have a child with any type of neurodivergence like ADHD or autism, those tantrums can be particularly difficult, but it's all a tough one. What causes, I went through this four kids, my youngest one's kind of growing out, but I've gone through stores and places out in public that they just melt down. So what is causing that? Well, I think first off, let's remember tantrums are normal. They're normal. Normal. But tantrums are caused by a child not having a need met, an unmet need or an unmet desire, and they don't have the communication skills or the emotional regulation skills to be able to cope with that frustration in another way. So as long as we realize this is common, this is normal. Okay, but what do you need to do when that happens? Because I've read many books and read many different yes. articles that some say just let it play out. Others say communicate with that child and try to get them to verbalize their words. Mm -hmm. So what is the right thing to do in a moment like that? Well, I think the first thing is stay calm and stay regulated yourself. Remind yourself you're not a bad parent. You don't have a bad kid. This is not your fault. Start from that place. Then taking a breath and a bit of a step back is really key. I think for a lot of kids, you can provide a bit of a distraction, change the setting, move from indoors to outdoors. Those all can be tips. But the big thing is a lot of kids when they're emotional don't do well with trying to reason with them or mm -hmm. use their logic. That doesn't doesn't really work. Shouting at a child, telling them to stop, that doesn't work. And also not unintentionally rewarding the tantrum. Because maybe you could give your child an iPad and the tantrum would stop, but then they just learned, oh, I can tantrum to get an iPad. So you don't want to give in and keep that firm boundary, but just give a little bit of space, it will pass. Okay, when you say give space, I'm looking for specific tips here. Yeah. So your kid starts to melt down, they're having a tantrum. Mm -hmm. I know that the parents, your first thing, because you want them to stop, is you grab a phone or an iPad and you say, here, yeah. here, here. You just said that that could be a reward. Yeah. So you, when you say stay calm though, what are you supposed to do? Just like, <sighs> let this play out? Well, you can. I mean, it depends on your child. I think staying present, I don't advise walking away or putting your child in oh, a time out. Away? I wouldn't do that. But I would want your child to remain visible, but you don't necessarily want to engage because a lot of times kids are looking for that attention and that reinforcement oh. as well. So I'm here with you. When you're feeling better, we can move to the next thing. That type of language, staying really calm, really regulated can be key. But I don't think timeouts work for tantrums. Is there a point where you should look for somebody and say, help me? <laughs> Absolutely. When your tant tantrums are persisting after the age of four or if they're worsening, okay. that can be a key. If your child's hurting themselves, hurting other people or destroying stuff, it might be an indication to get some more help. And then some children do this thing where they hold their breath when they're having tantrums and having breath holding spells and there can be some good tips for that. And then if you notice along with tantrums, your child's having difficulties in other areas, they're not sleeping, they used to be potty trained and now they're not. All those would be indications to talk to somebody like your pediatrician or any of us at Radies to try to help sort out what's going on. All really good advice. Always good to see you. you Thank too. you. You're welcome. I throw tantrums sometimes, I feel like, as a comment <laughs> to my husband. Life they, can be frustrating. They, they don't work, though. <laughs> Thank you, doctors.